In this example, the same thing we're going to apply. Ah, I should probably should have changed that up. Um, but we're going to replace this with 0. Now, if you guys remember the steps of factoring, Kelsey, what we talked about was not only is the first thing we want to do is set equal to 0, but the next thing we want to do is always see if we can factor out a GCF first. Well, now you guys notice that all three of these terms share an x. So I'm going to factor out an x. By factoring out an x, I leave myself with the exact same problem that I just had. Right? Exact same problem I just had. So now I can factor, I factor this, and I can factor that, which I already showed you the factoring form. What two numbers multiply to give you 12, add to give you negative 7? That's x minus 3 times x minus 4. Now I'm going to apply the zero product property with three factors. Yes? That's supposed to be an x, yeah. So now I'm just using zero product property. What, Kelsey? What? This is the exact, the only thing different is I factor out this x. So now all I'm simply going to do is just use the zero product property with all three of my factors. So x equals 0, x minus 3 equals 0, and x minus 4 equals 0. Therefore, my zeros are 0. I could write them in a solution set 0, 3, and 4. Right? Which I would still like to prefer going back to that solution set mindset for you guys. Do you guys agree with me? Do you guys see how the zeros or the solutions are the opposite sign of the factors? Remember that showed up on your test? Remember they gave you that x intercept of 6? And they said, what was the factor? Well, the, the x intercept was at 6, but the answer was the factor x minus 6. And one of the more common responses was x plus 6, because you saw a positive 6. But note how 